Hello, and welcome to this brief user video on how to use the irrigator from Nuper Technologies to remove earwax. If you just purchased your irrigator, congratulations. If you're considering an irrigator for your practice, stay tuned. Irrigator users have selected the fastest, most effective, and safe method to remove even stubborn earwax. Many users like the convenience of the optional stainless steel cart. Designed by an otolaryngologist, the irrigator heats water to body temperature. That's to avoid any caloric or vertigo effects, while giving you the ability to control flow and pressure. The volume and pressure of water are high enough to break loose extremely deep and tenacious wax, while monitored continuously to prevent any flow that could damage the eardrum. What used to take 10 to 15 minutes with manual removal can now be achieved in most cases in 10 to 15 seconds. It's so safe that with only a few minutes of training and practice, your non-medical personnel can perform the procedure. In this video, you'll learn how to operate the irrigator and use its state-of-the-art technology to quickly remove the patient's earwax. Meet Rachel. She's used the irrigator for over 15 years on more than 10,000 patients. She's going to help us demonstrate the proper procedure. Step one is doing an otoscopic examination of the ear canal and eardrum. If you find earwax in the examination that needs to be removed, you should then ask some basic questions to confirm the irrigator is the right instrument to remove the earwax. One, do you have a history of tympanic or eardrum perforations, or have you had a perforation in the last year? Two, are you experiencing pain in either of your ears? If the answer to either of these questions is yes, the patient should consult an ear specialist before using the irrigator. One more question. Have you ever had any surgeries on your ear? A yes to this question also means a referral to an ear specialist, except for ear tubes, which have been removed for more than one year. If the tympanic membrane is compromised in any way, the irrigator should not be used. Once you've established that the patient is a good candidate for irrigation, you can get the irrigator ready to use. Note, only use cool to room temperature water, no hot water. Normal tap water is fine. Rachel next attaches a one-time use disposable nozzle. An easy quarter turn locks it in place. Don't over tighten. Although it's not necessary, you may want to drape patients to prevent water splash from getting onto their clothes. Next, instruct the patient on how to hold the custom designed catch basin. Place the basin directly under the earlobe, about midway along the shallow section of the basin, tipping it slightly forward. This allows proper placement of the handpiece lens while irrigating, providing an optimal view of the ear canal, and prevents most water splash from getting out of the patient. At this point, Rachel explains to the patient that she will feel a full sensation of water in the ear and turbulence. Some patients might feel a little discomfort. Explaining this may help make the patient more receptive to the treatment. The irrigator light glows, signaling ready to use. The temperature display will show 37 degrees Celsius, or body temperature, plus or minus two degrees. Next, take the handpiece out of the cradle. Due to condensation, you may like to wipe the lens with a soft cloth. Sometimes, Rachel will demonstrate the procedure to the patient by directing water into the catch basin, starting lightly and increasing to full flow. Now, she positions the lens just over the lip of the catch basin. Since the level of depression of the trigger determines the strength of flow, Rachel likes to start lightly, directing the initial flow just beside the ear canal for a few seconds to acclimate the patient to the sensation. Rachel then takes the pinna with her free hand and stretches it to straighten out the ear canal. She then moves the nozzle directly to the ear canal. Rachel is watching and listening to see if the patient experiences any unusual discomfort. If not, she quickly pulls the trigger to full flow and maneuvers the tip in multiple directions using a circular motion in the ear canal. This helps to loosen and dislodge the earwax. The most effective results are obtained by utilizing the full flow with a fully depressed trigger. If the patient experiences any extreme discomfort, stop the procedure. Rachel may insert the tip slightly into the ear canal, no more than four to five millimeters or about a quarter of an inch. She is always careful not to push the nozzle to block the flow of water coming out of the ear. Rachel will continue with full flow for 10 to 20 seconds, periodically monitoring the water and earwax in the catch basin. 
Once she sees substantial earwax in the catch basin, or that the water level in the basin is nearing the top of the deep well, she will stop to empty it. Rachel places the handpiece either in the irrigator lens holder or the cart lens holder while emptying the water. If you don't have a sink or toilet nearby to empty the basin, don't worry, you can use a bucket. If the irrigator remains unused for more than one minute, you should remove the nozzle and place the handpiece back into the cradle. This ensures that the water temperature in the handpiece remains at body temperature. Rachel inspects the ear with the otoscope and concludes that the earwax has been removed. If there was more to remove, she would use up to three washings on the one side, filling the catch basin three times, to remove all earwax. A quick cleanup, and that's it. This fast, simple procedure alleviates a common but annoying problem for patients. We hope you found this instructional video helpful. Always read the operation manual before first using the irrigator. If you have any questions, please email us at info at or call 716 222 2323. And thanks for watching.